when you say things to yourself like narcissist is a buzzword right or is it really toxic am i just making a big deal out of something is it me did this really happen are you stuck there have you been there talk to me in the comments if you have let me know what you're going through let me know how i can help you or any questions that you have about this so that we can keep talking about this because getting unstuck from this and seeing truth and seeing the reality of situations really does free up your life and it really does help you to heal from these types of relationships my name is lise colucci and i am here to help you recover from toxic relationships and understand the nature of them and the nature of the way narcissists and toxic people think and work. What do you do when you're struggling with the feeling that you made the whole thing up, that it really wasn't that bad? When you have left a toxic relationship or you're thinking about leaving a toxic relationship and you're going back and forth because you're stuck in cognitive dissonance, you love with your heart, you know with your mind, or some combination of that, right, that makes it feel almost impossible to see truth, to see clearly. You feel like you're stuck in, in, in position and can't move and you feel like maybe you're making more out of it than is really there. So this feeling of, is it really that bad? Was it really that bad? It's sort of a normalization of the toxic things that happen. It's a desensitization that happens. It's totally normal, especially if you have been in toxic relationships a long time or have had repeated toxic relationships or were raised by toxic people, toxic parents, right? So if this is a normalization thing for you and this is you're just totally desensitized to the things that go on because guess what? You can cope with it. You have the survival skills. You're pretty strong and you can take accountability for the parts that are yours. And so you can just live with this and keep on going. Then in that case, you can see why that would feel like, well, was it really that bad? If you were to take someone who had never experienced a toxic relationship and didn't know people could be this horrible and put them in the same situation, they would see the truth because they would be shocked by how they're being treated. The other thing is, is this invalidation. It's a traumatic invalidation of the issues. The, the narcissistic person or a toxic person will invalidate any issue that you have, any anything that you're seeing as toxic in them, and they will minimize and devalue and create a situation where you feel like you're just, exaggerating you're too sensitive you're too something right because you're being told that and you're being fed that information it's not true okay people should not be toxic in relationships it is them that is supposed to be taking accountability for their behavior just like you do for yours there's also this denial mechanism that happens it's part of the whole thing it's part of not wanting to see what's right in front of you because you're afraid because maybe it's worse elsewhere because maybe being alone is worse because what if right the unknown the fear whatever it is for you that's creating the denial that's something to look at so that you can move past it and you can move through it and come out the other side and look back and say whoa that was pretty darn toxic when you have traumatic experiences when you have these sort of manipulations and toxic things happening to you from other people there's something that happens where we have traumatic blocking we disassociate from the thing that's happening and from the trauma itself and can cope through that disassociation. That isn't something that's easy to turn off especially if it's a mechanism that you've learned to do and a coping skill that you have from childhood we have to learn to feel the impact of how bad it is when we're treated badly in order to step away from it sometimes. And that's really hard, especially when your dissociative abilities and your ability to just step out while the bad thing's happening, right, is really strong. Other people are probably also invalidating the experience if you've told them they'll say that's especially if you've had a covert narcissist in your life if you have a covert narcissist in any way in your life and other people see them as a good person and other people see them as someone who tries really hard is pretty good at talking to people or, or all of that and they don't see the toxic things that happen because they're so 
uh, covert and sneaky and tricky the way they get in there with their toxic jabs and their expectations and, and all of the things we know that covert narcissists do. When nobody else sees it, somebody saying to you something like, yeah, your mom means well, can be the most invalidating thing you've ever experienced, right? And you're like, means well for who? For herself? But you can't say that because that other person doesn't see her that way. That can be something that keeps it so that you feel conflicted because everyone else sees it one way and you see it another way. Who does it look like the common denominator is? You. But that's not true. What you need to do sometimes is speak to people who've been there, speak in that is part of what the group coaching is for you guys. That is part of what why I created it is to have a place where people can go safely and talk about this stuff and receive the validation from one another and get some coaching help at the same time so that there's progress to move forward in your life. I mean, what we're really talking about here is the cognitive dissonance that happened, holding two opposing views at the same time. The feeling of, oh my gosh, but that's my mom, I love her, and that is the most toxic woman I've ever seen in my life. At the same time, conflicting, your brain doesn't know what to do with it. Your body freezes in, in, in the face of it. Your emotions go in both directions at the same time and you don't know which way to look and what to think. A lot of the problem in the fact that we can't see what's happening, can't see how bad it is, can't experience how bad it is, is what I said in the very beginning, is the normalization of it. It makes it so that that's your normal life and anything else, you wouldn't know what is healthy, right? Because of this. So let's look at a few signs of what is toxic so that you can start to question and start to think more about logically how you wish to be treated and does it align with how this person is treating you? Lack of empathy. Someone lacks empathy, and you know when they lack empathy when you've been around them long enough. Other people may not see it. They may think they have empathy if this is a covert narcissist we're talking about. But when someone doesn't seem to care and offers nothing by way of empathy when you're sick, when you're sad, when you're struggling in life, when or is jealous when you're happy, tries to knock you down when you're in, when you're in a good place. These are, this is, these are a few ways to see if there's lack of empathy going on there. An excessive need for praise and admiration, making everything about them, their achievements, their, they are the best thing in the house, whatever. Inability to take any accountability that's real. A covert narcissist might say, sorry, a covert narcissist might say, I know I shouldn't do things like that. I'm trying really hard. I want to be a better person. And then they don't take any action. Accountability is the action taken when somebody recognizes something in themselves that needs change. We don't expect people to change overnight. That would be unreasonable. But, but if someone is repeatedly never making any actual effort towards things that are toxic to others to make changes there, then that is a lack of accountability. A person might be overly controlling, super controlling, controlling in every aspect of your life, controlling to the point where you're like, wow, that's controlling. And you see that and you combat it in certain ways and you normalize it, but it, that, that's just a huge sign that someone is needing things to go their way and their way only. Easily provoked and defensive, Dis emotional dysregulation can cause that from, from survivors as well, but, it, everything can be going just great with a toxic person, with a narcissist in particular. Everything can be wonderful. And they will flip at the just the smallest thing that doesn't serve whatever it is and whatever bit of supply they need, or they just need the drama to get that supply in the moment. And or or they can't stand when people are happy. And so they, you know, and so it's this overreactive sensitivity and easily provoked especially if the ego is bruised. Inflated sense of self-importance, don't need to say a whole lot more about that. Exploiting others for their own gain, we've talked about that over and over again. It's all about them, right? Gaslighting, if you feel like you have conversations that don't make any sense because you say something and it's twisted, if when you try to have a conversation that requires feedback, you're getting dismissed, the topic's being changed, you're being derailed, you're being told you're crazy, it didn't really happen, you're being gaslit. 
So that it's sign combined with the others is, is a sign of a toxic relationship. Manipulative people who cross boundaries. Yeah, who don't let you have boundaries, who don't let give you space, who don't let you be an individual. And then a critical nature, someone who's really critical of you, someone who's harsh with you, who name calls you, who puts you down, who belittles you, who insists that you are worse than everybody else in the world, right? Like somebody that is continually hurting you through criticism. Those, okay, that little core group of signs there, if you're checking every box with someone and you're seeing that that is painful to be treated that way, and it's over and over and over and a pattern in, in the relationship that isn't changing, isn't shifting over time at all, no matter what you do, that might be time to consider the fact that you're seeing it as the way we talked about earlier in the video, which is you're numbed up to it, you're not looking at the truth of it, and it might be something for you to assess if that is what you want in your life or if you would like freedom from that. So if you need help with anything or want peer support, check out the information in the main description of every video. There's information on coaching, group coaching, and in the peer support, like I said, there's also ways to reach me there. Otherwise, we will talk more. Let me know what you guys think if you've experienced this and how you're feeling in the comment section. Thumbs up and subscribe. Bye-bye.